Hi there, physics enthusiasts. Welcome to our exciting journey through the Landau and Lifshitz's course of theoretical physics. This series is a treasure trove of deep physics concepts, and we're here to make these accessible and understandable. Today, we're tackling the first article of the chapter one about the equations of motion. Let's dive in. We start with a basic idea in physics, a particle. Think of it as something so tiny that its size doesn't matter for our calculations. For example, planets are like particles when we study how they move around the sun, but not when we look at how they spin. A particle's position is described by something called a radius vector label it as R. This vector consists of three numbers, x, y, and z, which are like addresses telling us where the particle is in space. Next up is velocity, symbolized as v. It's all about how fast the particle's position changes. In maths, we say it's the derivative of the radius vector with respect to time. Written as v equals the derivative of r with respect to t, or more simply, v equals r dot. Then comes acceleration. It tells us how quickly the velocity changes. This is the second time derivative of the radius vector noted as a equals the second derivative of r with respect to t, or a equals r double dot. In a system with multiple particles, say n of them, we need three n numbers to describe all their positions. This is because each particle requires three numbers, x, y, and z, to pinpoint its location in space. Thus, the total count of independent variables we need, three n, is what we call the degrees of freedom of the system. But uh, physics often presents us with scenarios where sticking to just x, y, and z isn't the most convenient or insightful approach. Imagine trying to describe the motion of a pendulum or the orbit of a planet using just these standard coordinates. It can quickly get complicated. Here's where the cool twist of generalized coordinates comes into play. These are special numbers, denoted as Q1, Q2, till Qs, and they are chosen specifically to make our analysis of a problem easier and more intuitive. For instance, in the case of a swinging pendulum, instead of using x and y, we can use the angle of swing as a single generalized coordinate. Generalized coordinates can be any parameters that uniquely define the system's configuration, they might be angles, distances, or any other relevant measures, depending on what makes sense for the problem at hand. The beauty of generalized coordinates lies in their flexibility. They allow us to describe complex motions in a simpler, more natural way, tailored to the specific dynamics of the system we're studying. Furthermore, the rates at which these generalized coordinates change, called generalized velocities, are key to understanding motion. They provide a direct insight into how the system evolves over time. By using generalized coordinates and velocities, we can formulate the equations of motion in a way that is often much more manageable and aligned with the physical nature of the problem. Knowing where everything is and how fast it's moving lets us predict what will happen next in the system. That's the power of knowing both positions and velocities. All this leads us to the equations of motion. There are formulas that connect acceleration, velocity, and position. Mathematically, they're second-order differential equations. They look like this, the second derivative of qi with respect to t equals a function of q1, q2, till qs, q1 dot, q2 dot, till qs dot, and t. Solving this a tells us the system's future path. Let's quickly recap with a focus on the math behind our physics discussion. We started with the concept of a particle, represented mathematically by its position vector r equals x, y, z. We explored how to quantify its motion through velocity v equals r dot and acceleration, a equals r double dot, which are the first and second time derivatives of the position, respectively. We delved into the degrees of freedom of a system, 
a crucial idea that quantifies the number of independent parameters needed to describe its state for n particles. That's 3n coordinates. The introduction of generalized coordinates, q1, q2, till qs, allowed us to reframe these concepts in a more flexible and problem-specific context, leading us to understand motion through the language of differential equations. This discussion laid the foundation for grappling with the equations of motion, which are second-order differential equations encapsulating the dynamical behavior of physical systems. That's all for today. We've started uncovering the secrets in Landau and Lifshitz's guide to physics. Next time, we'll see these equations in action. Remember, physics is not just about equations. It's about understanding the rules of our universe. Stay curious and don't forget to like and subscribe for more physics fun. See you in the next episode.